everybody, welcome back to the Ones Ready Podcast. You are about to dive into, I don't know whether it is, it's part one, or it's not part one, but it's part two or three of uh, Ivan Ruiz. Uh, he decided to come back and join us after retirement. So uh, enjoy this. It was some very candid conversation, which I really love because uh, I think we need more of that these days. But please feel free to go check out eberlystock.com. Use the promo code OR10. That is OR10. They are providing um, hunting, military packs. They've got technical apparel. Great company, uh, veteran owned. I mean, if you want to check out, you know, all the Instagram reels and, and all the YouTube videos on Carbon TV with Jana Waller, Terry Hewen, all these guys and girls that are out there doing great things hunting uh, or even law enforcement, they are almost entirely kitted out with Eberly Stock. So EberlyStock.com, promo code OR10 will get you a 10% discount. Enjoy. Oh, and now we're on to Ivan Ruiz for some more candid conversation. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Ones Ready Podcast. We're going to try this one more time. We already messed it up once this morning, but that, that's okay. Um, well, we'll get through it. And we're, we're trying to play, uh, trying to make it seem like we're professionals and everything uh, since we've got retired Chief Ivan Ruiz on. But uh, peek behind the curtain. We're terrible at this and still have issues. So, Ivan, welcome back. Thanks for having me, guys. Of course. Oh, he changed his voice and everything. It's gone deeper now, Ooh, so he's got, he got a radio deep, voice. Yeah, I'd say. Look close. at that. He knows too. Before hey, it was everybody. all, "Hey, Aaron, back. how you doing?" And I was, "Hey, everybody, <laughs> welcome back to the Quiet Storm with Ivan Ruiz. We're just here late night putting all of your favorite relationship talk out there. Thank you. This is Delilah. <laughs> I'm just keep that whisper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, man, welcome back. Um, so last time we had you on, um, it wasn't quite a year ago, uh, uh, probably seven or eight months ago now at this point, but you were kind of on your way out the door and then, um, you know, in the transition and everything like that. Um, and, you know, for those that aren't out there, when, when you're active duty, um, like you do have to be careful about the things that you say and that kind of stuff. So um, now we'll just say, I, and I'm not going to set you up for it, but now we can, we can kind of expect a little bit more probably candidness from, from Ivan, which is really good. I told you I'm not going to set you up, but I am going to kind of set you up. <laughs> I don't know how that, um, I don't know but, how that is not a setup, but okay. it's, yeah, I know. 100%. That was Peaches are, earlier when we're talking before we hit record, Peaches is like, listen, man, I'm not going to set you up. That was literally <laughs> a setup. Yeah, I don't know I if you know <laughs> the definition <laughs> Of a setup that, but the softball was like, Hey, Ivan, there was probably a bunch of stuff that you couldn't say when you're an active duty chief. But anyway, here's your platform. Anything to say? No. <laughs> what do you got to say? <laughs> no, I, no, I, what I did want to talk about kind of first, just to kind of ease into it is, is how did your transition go? Because we have talked to some folks that are doing the, the kind of active duty to retirement transition or just separation transition, and they have used different organizations, whether it's for-profit or non-profit to help that transition. And I'm wondering if, if you use anybody um, and, and how that went for you. Um, I, I did not. Um, and, you know, I think fortunately uh, I, I ended up having to use, you know, just my, my network to kind of, you know, get ideas and uh, kind of get myself settled uh, where I'm at, um, you know, the only advice I would give, like, you know, I, you and I spoke about, uh, Jared was you don't have a, uh, you don't have a job secured until you get that first paycheck from that job, you know, regardless of how many things you have set up prior to getting out and, you know, people saying, Hey, you know, I've got you. And, uh, you know, no matter how many job, you know, offers you have before even getting out, uh, my advice would be to, um, put that, put forth the effort. Uh, get as many options as you can and, and uh, to stay in the mindset that, you know, you don't have anything secured until you actually get your first paycheck from that, that job. Nice. So that would be, no, I, you know, no, I, I agree with that. And, and thinking about that, you know, uh, uh, the ways that we get a lot of things done in a military, yeah, we have orders and all that kind of stuff and there's processes, but a lot of time, the way that we, actually get things done or get to the answer that we need 
uh, when we don't have it is our network. So, you know, as somebody who's transitioned and is, you know, kind of reaching out to people and, and job hunting or, or trying to find the avenue that they want to take, like how important is, you know, building your network and, and when should you start building your network? Day one, right? You know, you don't, you don't, you know, you know, you don't know where Trent's going to be in ten years. You don't know where Aaron's going to be in five years. You know, you know, you, same thing with yourself, right? So, I mean, one of you guys could, you know, be, have this crazy idea where you end up being a CEO in, in a company. You know, so the earlier you build those relationships, you know, the more relationships you build, you know, the bigger your network, and and it, it may not be like you know directly knowing somebody that owns a company, right? It may maybe somebody like, hey, you know. I got a buddy of mine that I grew up with, you know, that does this and, you know, it just seems like something you'd be really good with, you know, and they just put you in contact. Uh, so, and it definitely does not have to be, um, your, your, uh, our network within our community, right? Like, you know, that, that's, that's one thing I would say is like, you know, I think guys like us, um, it's in our, uh, it's beneficial to us to try to, go outside of our community and look for other things that, you know, we are capable of doing. Um, and like, you know, to, you know, open your mind, like, Hey, you know, maybe I could get into, you know, computer software, or maybe I can, you know, like, you know, get into banking or whatever, because, uh, you know, a lot of our guys, a lot of guys do that and, and they're very successful, you know, uh, you know, versus, you know, I'm sure that, you know, there's guys, you know, we all know them that, you know, they want to just stay within this community and do certain things, whether it's contracting or, you know, working for, uh, communication, you know, companies, whatever case may be, you know, it's, it's whatever floats your boat, but, you know, I think, um, it's good for us to encourage each other to just, you know, think outside the box, look outside the box, grow our network outside the box. Cause I think, you know, at the end that really helps, you know, guys, you know, as they can, you know, come out. Cause like I said, you know, you can be like, Hey, you know, I don't think this is good for you, but like, dude, I got a buddy that, does fabrication man like you know he owns a huge warehouse like you know and he's looking at somebody so and I, I think you know uh this this transition it's it's been good you know I, I went through a little period where I was kind of freaking out where I didn't have some secured so I forced my hand to to really get involved on LinkedIn and get involved in you know indeed you know I, I did hire a, a career coach you know I, I went the route of you know hiring somebody to write my resume and my LinkedIn account so I you know so I didn't have to try to do that stuff myself and I can, I had examples to learn from. Uh, so, you know, I'm able to edit, you know, at this point um, and um, which was super beneficial. You know, I really learned a lot within a month and, you know, um, like I said, I feel fortunate kind of uh, being able, uh, I felt, I feel like I've landed on my feet. So I feel, nice. you know, and what I would say is it's, uh, you know, getting out, you know, as we, we've all talked about, right? Like, you know, getting out and not having that plan is a very, it's a super scary thing. So, you know, and when you do have something secured, man, it, it makes life, it just makes life so much nicer. You know, it's, yeah. it just takes a, a lot of stress off, which is, did you have an idea? Did you have an idea where you wanted to go? Like what you wanted to do? Or was it just like, I'm, I'm kind of looking for the right thing. And, and when I find it, I'll know it. So to be transparent with you, man, like, uh, you know, I had um, <clears throat> through uh, coordination and, and, you know, I'm not going to say any names or any companies, but, you know, I had through, you know, coordinating and networking, you know, for like about a year and a half out, um, actually years, years and years of like being in contact with somebody, you mm -hmm. know, that pretty much is like, hey, I got you. I got you. You know, just let me know when this and that. And, uh, you know. It, it just didn't work out, right? Like, the, okay. the, you know, it didn't line up when, you know, I thought it was going to line up. So, and then, you know, uh, another opportunity came about and uh, that kind of fell apart, you know, which would have been great, but it, it, that didn't work out. So that kind of put me in a position where I was like, okay, hey, like, you know, I actually, you know, I, I need to put forth a little bit more effort and uh, energy into this, uh, which was, you know, at the end of the day was really good. You know, it was really good for me because it, it forced me to learn you know, it forced me to network. It forced me to like, you know, like I said, you know, learn how to use Indeed, learn how to use LinkedIn, uh, reach out to, you know, our community network. You know, I reached out to uh, other guys that were, you know, already out that are successful, um, asked for, you know, call, asked for, you know, people's time, you know, to just get online, do face to face, give me your thoughts, 
you know, what should I do? How should I go into these meetings? And, and not to say that, you know, I, I did do, uh, this, you know, ETAPs and stuff like that. <laughs> but, you know, that, that's another thing I, I would say is like, you know, when it's your time, you know, I always wanted to be that guy at the squad where like I was not going to leave a void, right? Like I was going right. to do my job and I was going to be the chief and I was going to, you know, try to operate and do these things with the guys till it was time for me to leave. And, you know, and once again, to be honest, you know, sometimes I, I, I will admit that, you know, in the past, I think there's been chiefs that uh, have not done that. Right. And it, oh, was yeah. easy, it was easy to look down on them. Like, you know, like, you know, what, you know, he doesn't care about the squadron, you know, he's too busy worrying about like, you know, getting out. And the, but yeah. what I would say is, you know what, good on them because you get to a period where like, you know, Jared will tell you, Aaron, you know, Trent, you know, like, you know, as a, being in a leadership position in a squadron, you have so much, right? Like, uh, Chris, Christopher Tellsworth gave me a great example. He's like, you know, when you're a chief, it's like you have a ruck on and you're out, you're going for a ruck and, you know, you're, you're passing people up and they're, they're like, Hey, you know, Hey chief, can you take care of this? And you, of course, right. You're going to write it down on your, your to-do list, right? Yep. And you're like, all right, throw that rock in my ruck. So, you, you know, they throw that, you know, that, that, you know, that battery in your ruck and then you keep moving out and you pass somebody else like, Hey chief, can you take this? Throw it in my ruck. And before you know it, like two years ago, man, your ruck, you, you have a hundred pound ruck and yep. it's, you know, each one of those things have nothing to do with the other, right? You're just constantly like, you know, worrying about different, you know, different things, whether it's, you know, decorations or 1206s or, you know, helping somebody out at finance or, you know, it's just, and that, that's, you know, that's our job as a chief. That's what we do. But yep. Chris's point was like, you don't realize how heavy that ruck gets. Yeah, you're right. And then, so when you get out, like, you know, all of a sudden that ruck is gone and you're just like, holy crap, dude. You're like, I feel so much better. Like, you know, yeah. you don't have that kind of stress. So my, I guess the point, you know, once again, you know, you know me, I like to give uh, long answers to, to some, <laughs> um, man, I, I, it is important, right? Like there are, there are more important things and as, as we get older, you know, we, we realize, right. There's, we have, we have more, we have our priorities like at home and making sure that, you know, we're taking care of, you know, our families and stuff and our home and our bills and all this other stuff. Like, you know, th those are super big priorities and you can't do those things if you continue to involve yourself at work. You got to get to yep. a point where like, Hey man, I'm 180 days out. Like, that's it. Like, yeah. you know, this is yep. no, the squadron is no longer my responsibility. I really need to get myself lined up and get ready to get out of the military. And I would say that starts a year out, right? Like yeah. pulling in with the HPO team, like getting with those guys and like, you know, I, I did a year out and we did, I was like, I pulled my records front base. We reviewed everything. And I was like, I want MRIs and x-rays of every from head to toe. Yep. And, you know, and then you go through that stuff, you get all your imaging, you, you're seeing the HBO team once a week for something, right? So they can line your, your documents up. And once again, you know, whether you, whether you use the base assets or you hire a third party to get your, your med records ready for your VA claim, like super important, like yep. all those things, you know, and, th and the thing is like all those things take so much time and so much energy, energy to do. So th that's the reason why, like, you know, you got to get to a point where like you have to cut ties. You have yeah. to. Well, and and I, I want to dig into that for a second, man, because yeah. I, and I, and I want to dig into it because I think it's important, right? Like the type of people that get into these <laughs> career fields, you said it yourself, but you feel guilty when you start stepping away, like yeah. the question that I've been asking myself, like I'm, I'm at 21 years, I think in like, I don't know, like a week or something or two weeks. So I, January 2nd, I think is my Air Force birthday, right? So 21 years in and I literally have been struggling with, oh man, you know, it's, it's really time to start transitioning out and doing this thing. And th there's that voice in the back of my head, like, well, you're not allowed to miss work. You're not allowed to not do these yeah. things. You're not allowed. And the question you really have to ask yourself is like, when is it enough? It's awesome to hear T Dog say, like, that's a great, that's a perfect example of, you know, whatever. I always make a joke about my to do list. My to do list never gets shorter, it only gets longer. I have the, the things that I write down on my to do list in the morning that are like what I know that I have to do. And then it's a revolving door, like, take a number outside the door and, uh, and, you know, I'll knock them down. But so you, you started, you know, you talked to timelines here. So you started about 12 months out, really, you know, 18 months out, you're starting to think about this. Do you think you did it the right way? Do you think you gave yourself enough time? 
Yeah, I, I do. You know, like, you know, I, I remember I started conversations 18 months out and I started actually doing things 12 months out. But, you know, in, in hindsight, like, you know, I would I would have put more energy and effort into, you know, the things, you know, you, you, talking about it and setting up meetings, you know, and, you know, at least you're thinking about it. But like, actually, like, hey, like we got a meeting today to go over my records, like, you know, right. really, you know, I would have put a little bit more effort into it. Um but, you know, I, I'm glad I, I put, you know, the effort that I did put into it. You know, I, I'm happy because like, you know, I would have been screwed. So, okay. The but other thing I want to, you know, it's like anything else. Come, you just need to come up with your plan, talk to your team and then implement the plan. You know? Awesome. I, I want to hit this up too, because I got a very interesting DM um, and it was about the community and it was about uh, how we treat each other kind of on the way out. Um, a lot of people will tell you, you know, Hey, the, the day that you retire, like, you know, you're, you, you are only going to be in that unit for as long as your voice echoes in those hallways and then they got to move on. Right. And there's, there's value to that, right? Like the mission goes on. We don't sit around and, you know, this is a very hyperbolic example, but when we lose people, you know, we, we, we have a memorial, we say our words and then we, we move on because we got to go back to the mission. And we, we do that when people retire out of the military and, and out of our life too. But I got a really interesting DM from another PJ and they were talking about the toxicity of the community in certain aspects. Did you experience any pushback? Like, did you, you know, you kind of alluded to somebody said, I got you, I got you. But, you know, the question that he posed to me is, you know, sometimes we're our own biggest enemy. And we've talked about it on the podcast here before, like the hardest people, like we're trying to get people to come on and talk about H. Kaya. You wouldn't believe the pushback that we're getting for people just to come on and talk about the good things that we do. Did you experience any of that toxicity in the community? And and maybe toxicity is too strong a word, but you know, did you experience, uh, you know, anybody kind of standing in your way or, or maybe somebody that didn't support you as well? And you were like, Hey, what the F man? Like we're bros. We wear the same colored hat. What's up? Um, yeah, maybe I, I'm not sure if I, I, if, you know, I understand the question in its entirety, but, um, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think I've ever, uh, felt something like, you know, like that or, or never been supported, you know, like said, I'll go back, you know, I'll tell you a hundred times that I, I, I lived the dream, you know? Yeah. So, it, it was, you know, but I, I, I feel like, you know, I was just always surrounded by good people. Um, and I felt like, you know, if I did my job well and I worked hard and I represented the, the community well, that, you know, whenever I did have an issue, uh, you know, I, I've, you know, I, I don't think anybody's ever told me no. Nice. Um, good. so, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, whoever, you know, message you didn't, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, his situation is different or, you know, it, it could be very well be like, you know, that it's that individual, like, you mm-hmm. know, maybe he's not a performer, you know, sure. maybe, maybe he doesn't deserve, you know, what he's asking for. Uh, yeah. but, but I mean, I don't, I don't know who it is and, you know, I don't know the situation, but. Well, I love doxing people. So I'll just say his name out here. You want his address? <laughs> we'll go, we'll go, we'll go talk to him. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, no, no, cut, cut away. Don't do that. Don't do that. I mean, at, at the end of the day, <laughs> right? At the end of the day, um, you know, if he's approaching his leadership, right, and uh, you know, every every you know every squatter's got dickheads, right? Mm-hmm. Every, you yeah. Know, in, in, the, in leadership, right? But at the same time, man, like you know, I, I think the community's done a really good job with, the, you know, they know who they're placing in charge and leadership, and they they try to place good people with those, you know, bad people, right. To like try to even kill if, if uh, that's the situation. So, I mean, if, if that person is approaching his immediate leadership and going up the chain and he's still not um, getting the, uh, the support that he needs, um, yep. maybe he needs to look at himself in the mirror or, you know, maybe, love uh, you know, uh, yeah, I just find it hard to believe sometimes that, you know, the entire leadership chain is that messed up to where they won't support their, their people for, especially for personal reasons. Sure. So. Yep. And, and that I would, that's what I wanted to add in there just real quick is like, there's I'm a firm believer. There's three sides to every story. And at the same time, um, and, and I know this now that, you know, where I'm at, at different echelons, you have visibility to different variables in the equation. Right. So there are decisions that are made oftentimes, sometimes they're like, sometimes they are just bad decisions, like flat out. Like, so I'm, I'm, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all about that. But there are times where there are decisions where the access to information that I have that others don't 
a decision that is made probably doesn't make any sense. And they're like, you know, what's this dude doing? Right. But it's just like, if you had the information that I have and it's impossible to get all that information out to every single person and help them digest it. So like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm rambling now and I'm losing my, my train of thought, but I'll just uh, land the plane, Jared, Trent to land the plane. Yeah. Trent, Trent, save me. He's chiefing it up. He's like, you guys don't understand what I know. And I make these decisions and you guys, you, the you peasants down there don't understand what's going on up here. The higher echelons of senior leadership. So he- it's so heavy. It's so heavy holding the entire world up. You're the turtle that holds up flat earth. We found it. Yeah, but, but I, I did want to talk about that though. That, that one deep mentality. Like the, I think we all have that in the community. Like it's all up to me. Like we kind of breed that into our, our folks is like, Hey, like as an individual, like you, if, if it's just up to you, like you go out there and get it. And so like, as, as you transitioned away from, from being the chief and, and going out to the civilian world and, and, and other skill sets that don't necessarily have anything to do with a PJ, did you find like positives and negatives about some of the mentalities that we, we breed into our own? Uh, well, absolutely. You know, I, I, you know, it all starts from uh, selection, right? Not yeah. that you know, I'm, I'm not ready to get on that conversation yet. But oh right. man, I thought you Careful. were going yeah. into it. <laughs> well, and I will, I will say, I, I thought this earlier. You know, when when you were talking about how you had to learn everything in a month, I was like, oh, that sounds exactly like what we do our entire career. They're like, here's a brand new skill, you have to master this in a month, and oh, by the way, we're going to put you like you're going to have to show me this skill in combat about you know two months later. Like when you were talking about like I had to get all of these things done on this fast t- timeline, I was like, oh, shit, sounds just like the pipeline. I'm glad that he was set up for that for his entire career of having to learn something brand new and be an expert at it right away. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, at the end of the day, especially being in the, you know, being in the military and then with all the programs that we have now, which, uh, you know, are people are always trying to make it better. But. at Look, man, we, we are being in our our specific community. We're very spoiled. We have so much support, right? You know, we have so many things to our assets, you know, our, our, you know, to help us out. Um, like I said, we have leadership that, you know, I find it hard to believe that like, no, you know, I know you're getting out in three months, but you're, you're going on this TDY. They do that. Does it. Come on, man. Like, you know, so it, I think it gets to a point where it really just falls on the individual to, to put forth that effort and, you know, do what you got to do, you know, and you're right. That's exactly day one, man. That's, that's, you know, that's, you know, what we learn in selection and we're bred that way. So, I mean, the trend, like you said, we're bred that way, man. Like we are, at, we are at an advantage, you know, so yeah, versus, you know, other folks that are, you know, have regular jobs in, in the military, um, you know, and not only that, like, you know, the education that, you know, our peripherals give us the, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, give us the opportunity to get, um, I like to say, I think it just comes down to planning, you know, we live in a team community, so we, you know, you just coordinate, plan with your 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 team, your leadership, um, you know, and uh, you know, I, I think for the most part, we're not we're typically set up better than most people. So it's just it just really comes down to us taking advantage of the time and the uh, the stuff that you know we have in our toolboxes. Yeah, well, and I, I think that goes along with that is that is being like the go to person for everything as well. You know, like I, I'm, I'm getting into this mentality piece and these are things that I'm struggling with as I, as I look forward to retirement too. So I'm curious, like, did you feel like, I, I think some of these people that get out that are talking about this, like toxicity or something like I, I felt a little, I feel a little guilt about leaving. You know what I mean? Like, and that's probably like my ego and my narcissism speaking up, but you know, like as you're like leaving, you're like, Hey, like, and then you have these other people being like, maybe you shouldn't go. Like, do you really have to like retire and all these other things? Like yeah. did that, did that affect you at all? Did you, did you feel guilty or are you just like, how did you get to the point where you're just like, I'm out? Good yeah, luck, yeah. Guys. that's a good question. And you know, once I, you know, I, my assumption is, you know, for the most part, everybody's going to give you a different answer. Right. But so I'll just give you my personal. Um, I, I really think it, you know, if, if you're married and you have kids and stuff like that, I think that conversation kind of starts at home. Right. Cause like, you know, for me, either, you know, you're going to get out at a certain period or you know that you just love what you do. Right. And you know that, you know, I, I really enjoy my job. I, I get to hang around the guys. I get to jump. I get to do all these cool things. And I, you know, I collect a pretty good paycheck. Right. I got a gym. Like the next building next door is my gym. Right. I, you know, if I pull my hamstring, I go to the next building over and I have people, you know, massage it on me and stick needles in me. Like, come on, man. Like I live a really good life. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And then, you know, and, you know, then all the other cool things we get to go visit, you know, see and, and do. Um, but I think that, you know, for me, the conversation started at home, right. You know, it's just something that, you know, you know, my wife would initiate those conversations. And to be honest with you, like it, you know, at first it, it was very, uh, uh, contentious, right. Cause like, you know, I didn't know, I almost like didn't want to have the conversations and I'm talking about, you know, maybe five years ago, six years ago, I, I, I did, you know, to the point where, you know, and bad on me, like, you know, yeah. and, you know, my wife, right. For like, you know, like always like, Hey, you need to start thinking about these things. You need to start thinking yeah. about this. Where are you? Ah, and I just, wow. You know, hey, exactly. And, wow. And, I, you know, I, it would almost turn into an argument and it was my fault because um, I don't know if it was just, I was just too immature or, you know, I wasn't, I internally, I wasn't ready to have those conversations, right? I wasn't ready to like go. Right. Yeah. Um, so it, it, you know, and then with that, like, you know, actually starting school and going to school, right. And learning something and like, you know, realizing, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm actually capable of making good grades and maybe, you know, I, I can get smarter and maybe I can do something else, you know, like, and I, you know, it was all these little steps, you know? So like, you know, it was, it was having those conversations and realizing, Hey, you know, I do need to start thinking about these things. It was me, um, you know, thank God to the young guys, you know, I was on a deployment, like, and it was the young guys are like, Hey, come on, I'll show you how to sit down and we'll show you how to like sign up for school and use TA. And, you know, my wife, like, you know, once again, like, Hey, you need to start thinking about getting your education, you know, like all these conversations and, you know, and people kind of nudging me towards that and me realizing, Hey, okay, you know, I do need to start thinking about these things. Like I, I can do more. Um, and then, you know, uh, getting to the 58th, you know, it was very different being overseas, as we all know, you know, being overseas is, is always very different. Um, but, you know, getting to the 58th and like really being, you know, yeah, and I hope I don't, I don't hurt any feelings, but, but I'm going to tell you how it is. Being stuck in that office, right? Oh, yeah. Be, you know, you know. I, You're a peacock. You got to fly, baby. You can't yeah. be in that office. <laughs> it was and, you know, I was really treated differently at the 58th with, you know, I would, you know, I always made my time to go to the team room and go sit down with the guys. But I, you know, I just know, like, you know, I, no matter what I do, like, you know, I couldn't get the guys to call me Ivan. Right. Like, yeah. e and even Cause you're not, even, you're a chief. Guys, I have a problem calling you Ivan right now. Like I have a problem calling you Ivan to your face right now because you're not, you're a God dang chief. You're not well, me nine. You're a chief. The, but that's not who I, I've ever been, you know, and even, even yeah. with guys that I was at the 57th with that, you know, call me Ivan well, all of a sudden. And now we're, now we're, you know, here in Vegas and they can't call me Ivan. You know, I walk yeah, into right. a team room and I, I realize, I instantly feel like the dynamic of the, the room changes. Right? You're and a them. I want, I want You're to be not us. And I want to be one of the guys and just hang out. Like, I don't care what you do. Like, you know, just. If you, if you know you're going to do something that stupid, just like, tell me so I can leave, <laughs> you know, but like, I'm, I'm there to see the stupidity and you know, yeah, like, that's what right. I need. Like, I need to get away from, you know, you guys all know that. Like I need you know, yeah. to, those yeah, couple yeah. minutes, like not have those responsibilities and just be one of the guys, because that's what I came in to do. And, right. you know, along with, you know, when bringing up, I, you know, when bringing up like, you know, deploying and doing layer one as a chief, you know, people just laugh at me. So I'm like, okay, well then you know, I'm not going to go, you know, further into deployments because I, I did things differently, but I mean, you know, just knowing that, Hey, okay. You know, for me, this is not what I came in to do. And this is this environment that I'm currently in is not what I fell in love with. So, and along with all the other things, right. School real, you know, conversations with my wife and, you know, all these other things, I got to a point where I realized, this is what I realized is that we normally stay in for the guys, right? Mm -hmm. That's but right. At the end yep. of the day, all my, all my guys, all my peers, they're gone. Yep. And everyone that I try to be guys with won't let me be one of the guys. So it, and I'm, I, you know, and I think that's just how, the normalcy of it. Right. Uh, but I mean, it made me realize, Hey, like everything I, I I'm, I'm, that I love is really not there anymore. So like, you know, what am I, what am I really doing? You know, like, you know, I, I can, I, you know, I really, if I don't have those things that I love, man, I really should be paying more attention to the things that I really love. Right. I really should be home. I really wow. need to be at the practices. I yep. really need to like, you know, be around to like, you know, be a father and be a husband, be, you know, like, because I don't have an excuse anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like, 
like I really need to do, I really need to put my money where my mouth is because the people that really love me and the people that I really love deserve that. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm you know, way overdue. That's right. <laughs> For sure. I mean, there's, that's there's no the doubt trend. with the, the amount of the question. That's how, that's how I knew. <laughs> that's how I got to the point where I knew. Like, you know, everybody's like, you'll know. Like for me, that's how I knew. I was like, man, like, you know, it's just different now. So, you know, you know, I need to be a better husband. I need to be a better father. No, that's good. You recognize that. And, you know, um, I mean, I, I'm sure you're more critical of yourself than, than anybody else is going to be, but it, you know, you say in that, um, you, you know, you, you kind of gotten, you felt attacked. You're going into, um, you know, contentious discussions when, whenever your wife would talk about, Hey, you know, have you thought about transitioning or have you thought about this, this, and this, these are the same conversations that I'm having with Donna. Um, you know, because I'm short final and I'm sitting here going like, are you kidding me? I I still got at least 18 months left. And, and it's like, Oh yeah, I've been, so it's easy for me to tell people because I tell people all the time. I, all the I time too, too. I was, I know, I know Aaron, Aaron was there all the so time. Got to, you got to document, it. you got to, you know, this, 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 this. And then when it comes down to me, it's, Hey, it's, it's great for you guys. It, it's not me yet, but I, I appreciate that. Cause that's helped me realize that what I still need to figure out. And, and I'm wondering if, if you did is where do you draw the line between, you know, uh, what I do is who I am and it's, or it's not the best way to say it. It's, you know what I mean? Like I am a combat controller. I am an aspect aspect war or I am Jared, you know? Yeah. Like it's the difference. Where did you yeah, figure the that difference out between yeah, who you are and what you do? Like there's a lot of problems yeah. in the community of like, Hey, who, who am I? And people wrap it up. And then they, when I hear you talk about, I'm resistant to these conversations, I had the same thing. When somebody, you know, when, when I started having the conversation about, hey, it's time to look for the next thing. I was like, hold on, I'm a damn PJ. And then I had to go, yeah. wait, wait a second. No, I'm, I'm Aaron Love. And this this whole career, this PJ thing is going to be over. Like, I'm always going to have ties to that community. I'm always going to, you know, a part of me, you know, is going to be left inside of that. But, I, you know, the difference between who you are and what you do, that ego and that id getting wrapped up into those things. That's a That's a fine line to walk. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't think there's any way, uh, I can answer that for any of you. Like, you know, I said, I think everybody kind of, kind of goes through their, their personal transition. Okay. Um, but I, I do think it's like, it all comes down to planning. Like, you know, I think you just need, you got to set timelines for yourself and you have to be. You have you have to be conscious and open and willing to um, see those signs, right? And like I said, you know, thank God for my wife. Like, dude, thank God for my wife. Like, you know, you know, thank God for Donna. Like, you know, for bringing those convers- those hard conversations. To them, it may not you know seem hard, right? But this is you know at the end of you know people always like say, oh, well, you know, par- Parascue, you know, is not what defines. You know what, man, Parascue defined me. Pararescue gave me everything that I have. I wouldn't have met my wife. You know, I wouldn't have the kids that I have. Like, I wouldn't have, you know, like, if I didn't decide to go to Indo. Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I would not have you guys in my life. Like, you know, if I did not make that decision. And and if, you know, Pararescue defined me. I loved being a PJ. That's all I ever wanted to be. I just wanted to be the best PJ out there. You know, I wanted to do my job. I wanted to save people, right? You know, that's who I am and that's what I was. You know, and so, but I, you, like I said, I, I think it just comes down to conversations, right? Going to see your, the, you know, your health provider at the squadron and really talking about things like, you know, to help you through those transitions and realizing that those are like, at the end of the day, man, it's got to end and it sucks, dude. It sucks. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, it sucks. Like where the guys, the guys keep, you know, they come, they're like, Hey, you know, we're shooting this week or we're shooting on Monday. Do you want to come out? <laughs> you know, and Jared and I was like, uh, like, yeah, man. Yeah. I want to shoot, but I uh, do I got to go to some, dude, I got to go listen to the, I got to go sit in this dumbass just say it, hour just and a half it. long group staff meeting to yeah. listen about things that I don't care about. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> what are we talking you know, about? Exactly. 
you know, and I'm not saying those discussions aren't good. I mean, you have to have those discussions, but at the end of the day, I don't care. I don't care about what the helicopters are doing. I don't care about what the 130s are doing. That has I don't care. Do. I don't care and what I, their their IMR is. Like, why do I need to be in this room for you to tell me that these guys are missing dental appointments? Isn't this a slideshow that I could have looked at on my own? Why are we even in the same room? I can't tell you how many times I fell asleep during group staffing just because, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what I would tell you is, like, you fantastic. Know you know it's bad when you're, like, when I'm sitting in staff meetings and, like, dude, I have 1206s to write. You know, oh, right. Yeah. Just, Imagine. Imagine. You know, like, you're like, I have, I have my own admin to do this. Oh, what yeah, a terrible like, thing. I have my own dumb work that I hate to do and I'd rather be doing it. Exactly. Like I have EPRs that I need to be reviewing right now. Like, what am I doing? Oh. Like, dude, when that's, that's the kind of stuff, Trent, that, I, that like, you know, that's, but the thing is, those are the things that really help me realize it's time. Like, because that's not what I came in the military to do. No. I understand that that was my job. And obviously, you know, those things help the guys. And that's what I'm going to do. It's my job, right? And I'm being paid for it. I'm going to earn my paycheck. But at the end of the day, that shit sucks, dude. And that's not what I want to be doing. That's not that's what right, I want to yeah. do with my life. That's so, right. Well, you know, but, those, but like, I'm grateful for those things because like, those are the things, all those things help me realize like, hey, dude, it's time. It's funny, Ivan, because you, you're saying that, and, and, and I'll tell you what I'm hearing, because I literally had the same conversation with uh, Brandon Maxwell, who we all know about a month, month and a half ago, um, because we've seen it. We've, we've seen folks that get a little bit jaded as they either separate or retire, you know, just because they've been grinding their, you know, adrenal fatigue, and they're just, you know, or they, they hate the admin, like they loathe the admin, which I'm with you. I loathe the admin as well. Um, but the Air Force, like you've, you've mentioned it already, the Air Force has provided you and us with uh, experiences, training, opportunity, building networks, meeting our family members, um, which in turn, you know, have kids and, you know, and so on. All the different places we've got to experience. Like I was just talking with my kids uh a couple of days ago, actually, about like, hey, you've gotten to live here, here, here. We've gotten to travel here, here, here. You know, yeah. we got paid to drive across states. And, you know, we're hitting each state. And I was like, these are all things that we would not have had if it were not for the Air Force. Nope. And I'm not saying That's that right. it's for everybody, right? And I'm not, I'm definitely not saying that there are not difficult and times that are not enjoyable, like, because there for sure are. And I would be lying to you. If if any of us said that, or if any recruiter tells you that there's not going to be some tough times, like that's that's just a straight out lie. But there's also going to be times that are so incredible, and the the quality of people that come into your lives and, and will stick with you forever is so worth forever, it. forever. And yes, and yep. and when people poo poo on that, it's just like man, you you're. Well, those they're people the just same don't people. get it. Right. And they're they the same don't people. Get it. It's that, hard to explain. Yeah. And they're the same people that when they're out, they're on some of these uh, Facebook groups or, or social media that are just chucking spears. And because they never got it, they never t- took a step back to realize what this community has given them. I Not really a question, Ivan, just more of a, a statement. <laughs> I, and I'll. I kind of throw it out there. It's just because it was a it was a good conversation that Brandon and I were having, and uh, and because you know he's he's at the squadron now, you know, just just like Aaron is, and you know guys are guys are a little upset that the war is not going on anymore, that conflict's not going on, but that's that's not actually true because there is conflict going on. There is stuff that is still getting done, and we are still out doing things. It's just not in the forefront of the news. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. my TED talk. <laughs> you know, I, I would I imagine that ninety to ninety five percent of us, like you know, benefit from everything that the community gives us. You know, there's you know, you have the outliers, like you know, like I said. But I think that that may be, uh, you know, somebody that did something wrong and they got punished for it, and they just you know they couldn't they were you know man enough to. Like say, hey, you know, it's you know, 
I deserve that. Let me deal with what I got to deal with. And that, you know, and that's it. Move on, man. And then, and, just, and then continue to enjoy what the community gives you. Or, you know, we, we, we do, we get weirdos that make it through the, the pipeline that are just different, right? You know, yeah, don't have, for sure. You know, we have guys that are just not team guys that, you know, don't really get to really absorb what, once again, what the community offers us, you know, the good times. Um, so, you know, you're going to have those outliers that just, you know, it, uh, not that they don't belong, but they're, they're just different. Um, that, you know, of course they're going to feel that way, you know, and that, I mean, I'm my assumption is that's any business you get into. So it is what yeah, it is. Absolutely. So you kind of talked about it too, as, as you, as you went through your evolution and, you know, you highlighted it when you talked about leaving, um, you know, leaving overseas coming from the 57th and then going to the 58th. And, and you, you talked about, there was a change and, and you felt like, you, you didn't say this, but I'll paraphrase it. You felt like you didn't fit in. You felt like that's not what you got in to do. <laughs> Um, no, no. So, I, well, let me. Here, I'll let you finish. Asking. No, go ahead. No, it's perfect. No, no, I, I guess then, if I said that, then I, I misspoke, which I do okay. a lot. So, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to correct myself. <laughs> no, it, it's not. It's not that I didn't fit in. It's not that. Okay. I, you know, no, I mean, like the, the guys were great. I love the guys. You know, like I, I, you know, I had, you know, Seth Davis is my commander. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, Steve Coletti was there when I first got there. Then Ryan Holiday got there. You know, which you know, it's amazing man. Just good good people, good leaders. And, you know, Seth came in and, you know, and Seth and I were together at the seventh, you know, and I love, you know, I love him, you know, to death, man. Like, you know, I, so, I mean, I had, you know, once again, I had better people. I was surrounded by better people than me always. Right. Okay. From the young guys to, you know, the commander, just, you know, it was just, I was just in a, an environment where it was just no longer my time. I should say it wasn't, you know, okay. I, was just, them I wasn't, I'm not, not, you know, I'm, you're I'm not, master, them. yeah, I'm not master on running the team anymore. Right. right. Because, uh, because I did good things. Right. I like to tell people like we, we live in a community where you do good things and you get punished for it. And that's just, you know, and people will laugh at me, but that's like, no, know, that's facts. Here's, here's things, more Tristan, work. You stick yeah. you in an office, you know, yeah. and you know, like that, you know, to me, it, it's just the way of the world, but it, you know, it sucks. And it really, what it comes down to is I think, for me, I'll speak for it. It's just me being immature and not wanting mm -hmm. to grow up. Right? That's perfect. Right. So we, that's we really, get the question. That's, that's what it is. It's just me being immature and not wanting to grow up and like accept yeah. possibilities and, you know, and, you know, like I want to go out and play. Yeah. Like what I came in to do. Like, exactly. you know, and that's, that's all I've ever wanted to do. So, yeah, you know, that's. You should have been cool. so good at it, Chief, because uh, that's what you get. That's what, that's what happened to you is, is, is you, you, uh, the curse of competence caught up to you at the end. So, uh,